My mom was the kind of mom who would slice apples for the boys when we came over. You know, the boys, they would come over, we'd play video games or something, my mom would slice apples and bring them in. Here you go, like, just sweet. My mom was awesome. I had a great family. My mom and my dad were really supportive of me, everything I wanted to do, and you know, they were at home most nights. We would eat dinner together. I mean, I had a good upbringing, good family. As a young man, I found myself sixth, seventh, eighth grade, really wanting to fit in. I didn't feel like I really fit in with anybody. I felt different. I felt like my interests were different. I felt like my mannerisms, the way I, I act, the way I talked, the way I interacted with people. I, I don't know if it's true, but I felt that way. I felt like an outsider. I was 15 years old playing with these 20-somethings and I'm, I'm on top of the world because now I truly am, oh my identity is locked in. I am a sex, drugs, and rock and roll fully. I can remember one night where I had used so much, I had used so much that night that I was literally hearing people talking all around me. I'm walking around an apartment complex and it sounds like there's a party going on inside of every apartment room. And I'm walking the, the sidewalks. I have all these drugs in my pocket. I'm really, really nervous and paranoid, if you're familiar with that term. And I'm listening to parties go on. And, how's it? and nobody's even home, all the lights are off. I don't know where I am, where I'm going. Nobody's around to to help me out, I don't know where I'm looking, where I'm going. I remember at the end of that night, I think it was the next morning, I had been up for a really long time. I don't really care to mention how long. But I can say that I went to a friend's house and, and fell asleep for five days. It's something that, unless you've been through it, it's hard to understand maybe impossible to understand. The kind of hopelessness that you have in yourself to be so addicted to something and hate yourself for it and have no power to stop. That's when I finally realized that I was so addicted to not only the drugs but the lifestyle of it all that I couldn't stop even if I wanted to. A friend of mine who has now passed away because of drug use, my age. He, he'd never driven a car before and I had my Toyota pickup. It was actually my last day with the pickup. I was gonna show him how to drive. And so my friend, his name's Jason, my friend Jason, you know, I let him get in the driver's seat and I'm, I'm coaching him through it. What well, one thing I forgot to tell him was after he puts the car in, in reverse, that he needs to hold his foot on the brake. And he sticks the gas pedal in reverse in an apartment complex parking lot. And we fly backwards and we smash into a building. We, we pin this building and we're crawling up the back of it because this, this truck, man, is strong. So it's going up the side of it. And so we're like, our backs are kind of lifted up and we're going, oh my gosh. And then we hear screaming. And that was my first night in jail. The, the most amazing part about that story is that me and my friend, we go actually and find this guy. We visit him in the hospital because I still had values that were built into me. I had values. I cared about people deep down. My parents had taught me to do that. It was just inside of me. I, I wanted to know he was all right. We go over there and we walk into his hospital room and there he is with a, with a stub for a leg. They had taken the rest of it off and it was bandaged up. He had only one leg because of us. 
because of what we did. And the very first thing he says to us, and we're mortified, you know, we're crushed. We, no one had to say anything to us for the guilt and the shame to just wash over us. And the very first thing he says to us is, boys, you didn't mean to do this. I forgive you. I had heard about God, heard about Jesus, or whatever. And I thought, what the hell? Might as well give it a shot. And this is the prayer I prayed. I remember it. I'll never forget it. I prayed, God, I'm sitting there on the couch, or on the, the box brain. I'm sitting there, and I'm high as a kite. I'm sitting, you know, God, if you're up there, get me out of this. I got arrested the very next day for the very last time of my life. And in maximum security in Sutter County, there's a big steel door that slams shut behind you when you walk into the dorm. And I'll never forget it. As soon as that door slammed, that prayer came into my mind. And it was like, it wasn't the, I know, an audible voice, but I remember this strong impression and the words that came to my mind. I need help. But it wasn't like me saying it. It was like something was making me say it. Someone, something. At that time, I, I still didn't know. And I said, is that what I meant by help? Remember, it was, I need help, but it felt like someone else was saying it. Is that what help means? Maybe it is. So instead of doing all those years in prison, which would have only further ingrained me into a full-blown lifestyle of misery and self-deception, horror. I took the Salvation Army. They start talking about Jesus. first I thought the air conditioning was on too low because I started to get goosebumps all over. I don't know what came over me, but in my first month at that program, I give my whole life and my whole heart to Jesus in that little chapel, the Salvation Army in Stockton. Say what you want about Stockton. That's where God saved my life. My name is Elliot Jones, and I'm forgiven. Thank you.